Starting off this vlog with the DC Universe Rebirth one shot, uh, best two ninety nine I've spent. It's almost like a, an overture of what DC is going to do with the Rebirth. You think it's the beginning, but it's not. Check this out. Why would I be showing you Justice League fifty one? Remember, Justice League fifty ended the Dark Side. In Justice League 51, they see three different threats that are all based on interdimensional uh, connectivity, right? So, Green Lantern gives Cyborg some juice and they blow it away. Now look at this. He says, oh, so right here we have Robin being brand new to the Justice League, all right? And then Batman over here says, no, you're going to lead it? And we have this monster in red talking throughout this entire issue. Well, check this out. This is continued in Titans Rebirth number one. So Titans Rebirth number one has Wally West slash Kid Flash in a brand new outfit. Now, side story. Do you know when he ever got the new outfit? The only thing that I saw is like, hey, man, I shouldn't have worn a new outfit because no one recognizes me. But in this Titan Rebirth, it's actually a follow-up from the Flash Rebirth when Kid Flash is kept in this universe by Barry Allen and we start unraveling this whole Rebirth Watchmen um, undertone. But this, the one shot, just so you know, the three pages of Blue Beetle in here are exactly the same as the Blue Beetle Rebirth that just came out last week, and that has the Dr. Fate cameo. And it's not xenophobia, it's about magic. Weird switch there. Okay, but now we have this Rebirth that you think is number one, right? And the whole anthology of this Rebirth, Reboot, Rebirth, Reboot, Reboot. Then it goes into Flash that also redepicts him saving uh, Wally West and keeping him in the, in the universe. But quite honestly, it's this is the title that carries this. Because Flash goes into his own, you know, he has his own school of Flashes, right? So Titans is actually the carryover of this because it's really about Wally West this time. Let me just remind you that this Justice League 51 is before Titans. And then we have Justice League 52 here that is before Action 957. All right, want me to do that again? We have Justice League 51 actually starts all of this. Justice League 51 goes to Titans Rebirth 1. Justice League 52, which is the new Man of Steel, goes to Action 957. And then we get to Rebirth, and then we get to Flash number one. All right, do I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Let's keep on going, peoples. Just to reiterate, Justice League 51, we're still in the new 52. We have Abnet and Paul Pelletier uh, writing the precursor to Rebirth that is continued in Titans Rebirth number one by Abnet Booth, Ratmund, and Dollhouse. And I believe it takes all of these three to make this art so good. Notice the red costume. However, it is in this one that we actually see <coughs> why and how he gets his new costume. And now the Titans versus Teen Titans. DC's Justice League number 52, right before it starts into Rebirth by Dan Jurgens. This is after the Apocalypse War. Just want to show you one thing, that this is continued in action, just so you know. So Justice League 52 goes to Action Comics 957. That's where we pick up. And if you want to turn off a uh, Superman reader, let's put three Supermen in there. Okay, yeah, we got Clark Kent without any powers. And then we have Superman. That's really Lois and Clark Superman from a world and they don't know how they got here. And then we got Lex that wants to be the new Superman. That's Action Comics. I consider it the team up. As I said from Justice League 52, this is the continuation in Action Comics, actually 958, so they actually can get to the 1000 issue. Uh, I'm going to call this the team up of Superman. You got Lois and Clark Superman here. You got Lex being a Superman. And then there's actually Clark Kent. That doesn't have powers. That's from, well, he doesn't know where he's from. 
Detective Comics 934 is the first of Rebirth so that they can hit their 1,000th issue. I'm going to call this the Batman team up. Check it out. Clayface is in there, right? We got Batwoman and then we have, you know, Robin and this is the team up. And here's 935. Sets up a good mystery and a story. People are saying this is one of their top two favorite titles. I'm going to say Tom King's Batman is the first and foremost in all of the Batman and Rebirth titles. But let's keep on going. Detective Comics 935. This is the first one after the Rebirth. And I've been hearing that this has been a very, very good title. Uh, again, I believe just like Action is the team up of Superman, I believe that this is the team up of Batman, the Bat family, with Batwoman, etc. Um, this is by James the IV. There's several Batman titles coming out. This is the team up. Superman Rebirth. Notice that this is a very big rebirth and a number one. And then we have the rebirth up here in number one. That's how we're supposed to tell the difference between a rebirth title and an actual number one. I'm assuming they did this so that they can have a number zero. To me, it's confusing and needlessly confusing. So here we have Superman that deals more with John the Sun and Lois and Clark Superman. I just want to point out here how they delineate action and Superman. All right, moving on. Man Rebirth number one, pretty, pretty cool cover we got here. We got John the son and Lois the wife, and obviously he shaves with his little eyes to the mirror thing. I do find it odd that we have Superman Z, that's obviously by design. However, action is really the Superman Z. This is more of the family title, if you will. Superman Rebirth number two, the family. Issue, oh, look at that, House of L. How nice is that? Well, here's the cliffhanger, people. And you know what sort of ticks me off? Yeah, let's add another freaking Superman. Superwoman's, uh, possibly, Rebirth number one. Now, this is the only, this is the very first one, but it doesn't have the big Rebirth, right? Because it's a new title. Be mindful of that, people. If it's a big title, it's a rebirth of a title that's already been going. But if it's a new title, then the rebirth is here and there isn't a first number one. A first number one and a second number one. Thanks for being confusing. Jimenez, and you know what? There's two different types of uh, things going on here. And for our first issue, it's very shocking. Lots happened in just the first issue to set this up. Don't know where it's going. Um, pick up this issue then decide is my uh, advice on that one. Supergirl Rebirth number one. Notice the really big rebirth so there will be a Supergirl number one coming out. I think that they've done very well taking what the show did and putting the other title together. Well done DC on this one. We'll see where it goes. The new hyphenated Superman. The Chinese Superman. Number one, Gene Yang. Gene Yang was brought in to sort of save Superman in the last arc right there before the final days. And I think now he gets to finally tell his story and I really like it. And a lot of people are dropping it, but I like it. You know why I like it? It's a freaking bully, know-it-all bully that got superpowers. The new hyphenated Superman number two, it's still going with slapstick humor. I didn't know Gene Yang had it in him. Um, and this is, you know, wonder hyphen woman and this is bat hyphen man i'm loving it again a lot of people are dropping it i think it's the humor that dc needs in new hyphenated superman chinese guy a hyphenated superman rebirth number three variant cover i'm still enjoying this i think it's fun i think it's irreverent i think it's bumbling uh yeah loving it hyphenated superman Batman Rebirth, Tom King, the CIA operative that wrote Sheriff of Babylon for Vertigo, who wrote Vision for Marvel. This guy is like the next rolled doll, okay? And in this one, not too much happens. They just end up kicking a tree. Um, but let's continue with Tom King's Batman. Rebirth, Tom King's Batman number one introduces Gotham Girl in Gotham. We don't know anything about their backstory just yet. All we know is that 
He saves a day where Batman couldn't, but Batman is a stud during a fail. Okay, I won't give it away. Variant cover of Tom King's Batman Rebirth number one. Not the Rebirth title, but the actual number one issue. Tom King's Batman number two is a Solomon Grundy tale. So he's sort of popping around because the actual beginning of it was about Calendar Man. Tom King's Batman number three, this is when he starts really showing his genius. I'm gonna flip through these real quick. So there's no spoilers, but does that look familiar to you? Does it? Does it? Well, this is actually a different origin story. You can tell when you read those that something's a little bit off, right? No spoilers, something's a little bit off. And then, wait a minute, we get to know what it's about. Tom King's Batman number four, much needs to be inferred on this one. It's almost like the Solomon Grundy could have been used to detail this, but it's the writer getting it going. Again, must infer a lot of things going on in number four, but now we got Batman and Gotham fighting each other. Leads to Tom King's number five, freaking perfection. What he had done in the first couple of issues is pop around a bit, but I'd have to say right here, the end of the trade, if you will, the end of the arc, superb. This is the reason why this is the number one title in the Rebirth conglomerate. Tom King's Batman, already at issue number six. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Seriously, my favorite Rebirth title. He's just, he's a master man. This guy, so good. So Snyder couldn't keep away, but now we have an all-star Rebirth Batman. Uh, that's five bucks. And I haven't read all of Snyder's from start to finish, but I can tell the difference in voice of what he's been doing. And I definitely want to point out that the all-star is basically the artist. So basically all-star Batman with Snyder is the American alien that Landis did with all the different artist uh, for Superman. Um, I do want to point out one thing in this. In the very beginning, when he says, did you throw it away, that it? I had to reread to figure out what that it was. And that's pretty nifty. So I'll tip my hat to Snyder on that one. We'll see where this goes. Dan Jurgens concludes Batman Beyond in issue 16. We have Rebirth coming up. They do a little bit of timey-wimey stuff here that both Tim Drake and Terry McGinnis are still alive because they rewrote the past. So therefore the future he's in is a brand new future. Okay, I'll live with that. Hope Larson's Batgirl number one. Again, no big rebirth right here. This is going to, why they didn't have another title that was Batgirl is beyond me. This is not going to last long. Why? Because of the Benson sisters in Batgirl, Birds of Prey, Rebirth number one, and then we have the first issue here, Batgirl, Birds of Prey, issue number one. It's, it's better done than Batgirl. It's more reverent. It has more to deal with it. You have TV writers. We have the Benson sisters that are TV writers. So I'm going to pick Batgirl, Birds of Prey over Batgirl. Nightwing versus Red Hood, I'm going to choose Red Hood. Now, Celia has done a very good job taking his Grayson title and moving it into Nightwing. In this one, we get to know why he chose the name Nightwing, and it's not from Batman. Nightwing number one, Batman disses himself, said go do your own thing, and then Nightwing gets a new mentor, thus the arc called Better Than Batman. Dropping it, a lot of people like it. Don't follow me on that. I'm just choosing Red Hood instead. Red Hood number one. I guess maybe because I had low expectations, but the art, the angles, the synopsis, the past, present, and future, I'm really liking Red Hood and the Outlaws. Never thought I would. I'm gonna put it on my pull and take this over Nightwing. Red Hood and the Outlaws, number two variant cover. Rare, Jason Todd is with Artemis. I didn't know that I was gonna like this so much. I'm giving it a thumbs up. It's really fun. All right, so we're we going with Green Lantern, zzzz, or are we gonna go with Hal? Hmm, 
Well, as you can see right here, Jeff Johns wrote the Rebirth title of Green Lanterns, and in that they said that there was, they were going to be trained by the Justice League, okay? Puts the battery together so they have to share. She can't make constructs, and now things start to deteriorate because they're just rookie cops. I actually read this out of order. I read number three before I read number two, and when that doesn't make a difference, something may be wrong. We are up to Green Lantern's uh, number four by Sam Humphreys. And basically what you have to decide is whether you want the Red Dawn with the Reds, green versus red, versus the space green versus yellow. Green Lantern number one you can see that the core is going to come back and that Sinestro is going to get young. Again, this is going to be green versus yellow and it's more spacefaring than uh, the Green Lanterns. Uh, Hal and the Green Lantern Corps, number two. The core is back. Oh, is gone. Yellow's ruling. And it's Robert Venditti. And Robert Van Ditty is Valiant's Exo Manowar. He does other titles as well, but he's, he's the main Exo Manowar over at Valiant. So he's good with the spacefaring uh, storylines. I would pick this over Green Lanterns. Plus, you get to see the Green Lanterns in Justice League, though Justice League is off the rails, if you ask me. Don't be fooled by the bad cover of Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps number three, but I would say after reading this, Venditti has got it. I would drop Green Lanterns and continue with this. We still have Guy Gardner that's out on the scouting mission and Jon Stewart sort of at the base wondering where he is, but Hal has an awesome, awesome fight. Big time, like 12 to one fight with the wonderful, wonderful constructs happening. Got me over on this, Mr. Vendetti Diddy from Valiant Universe. Abnett's writing a lot of titles, peoples. And here we have Aquaman and Titans. Aquaman Rebirth number one. I'm a big Aquaman fan. Have all of the new 52. Really love Throne of Atlantis, not the movie, which is should be called Origin of Arthur because they switch things up. But now we have Aquaman Rebirth. And in Aquaman Rebirth, it started off with him going against Manta. Now he's trying to like repair the land and sea politics. So he has sort of an embassy, if you will. And Mira already changed her uh, suit from the Aqua Woman suit back to this suit. Why they did that, I don't know, Sam Ryder. Then we have uh, going against Manta, but boom, within number two, this is done, right? No. Yes, I was correct. This is a miss cover is what I call them. Uh, they're not even in the same room together in this one because the fight and the arc is done here. It was almost too quick, whereas everything else is a slow walk. So this whole issue is just about Arthur getting arrested. Moving on to this one, it's Aquaman number four, and then we have five and nothing has changed. Here he gets out. Here he tries to, basically now he's a fugitive. I, some people like it, I am not. Aquaman already up to six. That's Abnett's Aquaman. In this one, we get to see Mira and Arthur knock around uh, Superman a bit. Interesting. Surprise hit here. Didn't think I was going to keep up with this. Green Arrow Rebirth by Percy. And I have to tell you, Schmidt is doing excellent on art. That's what kept me with this title. Nothing huge happens in this one, pretty straightforward. About to drop it after this one, but I kept on going. I just need to say that when he says he, uh, he flunked geometry, but aced calculus, well, calculus is geometry. It's Riemann sums in the area underneath the curve. Moving on, you know, there's, there's some politics in here and I don't like politics in my comics, but again, I kept on going with it because of the art. In arrow number three, we see the ladies in his life. And the story is still heating up. He's poor and he's get his money back. And there's uh, this villainous cult organization that's on a ship he needs to get to. Hero number three, we have mom and sister behind uh, at this point uh, going against them. 
Green Arrow number four, we get to see a little bit what's happening on the evil cult ship. And uh, Diggle joins the crew with Oliver to uh, go get his stuff back. So to finish out the arc, Green Arrow number five, I'm going to say that I'm not a fan of Green Arrow. I think the show is a soap opera with hoodies, but the art and action in this title has put it on my pull list. I suggest you get the trade if you haven't uh, gotten any of the singles. And uh, it's an ample story as well. So hey, Green Arrow, you got me, Rebirth. You know how I said I wasn't really a fan of Green Arrow, but the art always kept me in it? Well, in the second arc, which is the arc of Sins of the Mother, part one, they change the art. Um, it's cartoony. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's certainly not what it was. Oh well. Harley Quinn, number one, one and done. Now I like Amanda Connor and I like what she did in Starfire. I have all 12 issues and I don't even know why. I just liked it and kept on picking it up. Something's amiss on this. I think she tried to cram too much history in one. I don't know, but uh, I got to weed out the rebirth. So this is where this one's gone. Greg Ruckos, Wonder Woman, rebirth, number one. He did something very bold here. There's a lot of different origin stories of Wonder Woman and now he's basically saying well which one is it do I know do I know is it this or that the one he did not incorporate was Grant Morrison's Earth One Wonder Woman with the six-pointed star that Hercules was the dad I can't stand that one worst Earth One hardcover there is now starts the ping pong this is number one Wonder Woman by Rucka and I thought she was going to be in Olympus, but she couldn't find it in this one. But now she's somewhere in Cheetahville. Hmm, okay. Okay, so now we're year one because it's an even Wonder Woman? Okay, now it's an odd issue, so we're back in the present. At least Steve was in the Air Force. There was one time they called him Master Chief, and that's uh, Naval. But this is a number four, so we're back to yesteryear and the origin story. The ping pongs, man. I mean, do, are you gonna like collect all the odds or all the evens? Sort of odd, but this is what it is right here. That is what they're doing. Hopefully, that's in focus for you. It is a cool thing what they did with the Navy SEAL seal that had the trident, which they attributed to Poseidon. That's pretty cool. Wonder Woman Rebirth number five by Greg Rucka. We love Lazarus. Um, I'm going to say that the odds are the present, the even is year one, and I love this art. Look at this art right here. That's something special. That took some time, really digging it. Um, they're calling uh, Trevor Master Chief. Master Chief means Navy, that's killing me. So year one we have him in the Navy. Uh, excuse me, year one we have him in the Air Force, year, and then the odds, he's the Navy. What is this? What is this? Thank you, Dr. Blue Light. Anytime I see Dr. Blue Light, I think Manhattan. Is this an Easter egg? The woman rebirth number six. So, uh, this is number one, and it's a year one story. I'm gonna say Nicola's art. Wonderful shading, weird jaws, not so great looking type of panels. Uh, but all of these uh, animals right here, it's a pretty cool angle, no spoilers. Joshua Williamson has his work cut out for him. He did Nailbiter, he did Ghosted. Uh, let's see, he also did Illuminati for Marvel. Well, all of these put together, he needs to put the TV and the Flash and Rebirth all together. Why is Flash always the guy? Flashpoint, now Rebirth, always seems to be the cornerstone. Maybe because you can go back in time, I don't know. But here is Flash Rebirth, number one. Joshua Williamson's Flash number one. Again, doing a really good job incorporating the show and uh, the Rebirth universe right here. We have Wally over here, but 
unlike the show, Iris is white. So there's sort of a compromise, I guess, between that of the TV and the uh, history of Flash. Hey, you know, live with it. Joshua Williams, good. If you don't read Birthright, get the trades. It's excellent. That's one of Joshua Williamson's best works, as opposed to Illuminati over at Marvel. Egods! Okay, well now, Flash number two, we got three Flashes running around. Now there's a speed storm in number three, and there's like, everyone's a freaking Flash. I also believe this is when the new Godspeed villain comes in, is in issue three. I'll check that. Okay, really, really quick, all right? Oh, so cool. Okay, so now we're starting, we're almost to the end of the trade, right? So Joshua's the Flash number four, we have a school of speedsters, right? And he pulls a Tony Stark. No spoilers. I'll let you figure out what that is. Um, yeah, so a cool way of making a lot of flashes, but not having it going to like really write themselves into a corner. So action comics, team up of Superman. We have detective comics, the whole Bat family. And now Flash, we have a whole school of flashes. So Rebirth, what is it? it seems to be a lot of every name of a superhero and people are getting married arthur and mira and lois and clark seems to be flash number five joshua williamson keeps me on the hook i would have dropped this i think it's the end of the arc for the trade but it's not we get to know a lot about mina the fastest woman alive who calls herself fast track because she can track other people with the speed force well as he's balancing his cop life and is, is training the speedster life, well, she says, Godspeed is in a coma. Well, that would suck, because I really liked Godspeed. He's a pretty cool villain, wasn't he? Yeah, Dr. Carver. Well, we'll see. Suicide Squad, number one, Rebirth. This is not Joshua Williams, this is Rob Williams, and I can't decide. Uh, it's good art. It's it's very gritty. It's uh, pretty cutthroat. I can't decide whether I like it and it's going to keep on the list or not. On the bubble. Blue Beetle number one rebirth totally exceeded my expectations. I didn't really know that much about uh, Blue Beetle, but just this one opening page has it. Now, I want to point out the fact that Giffen and Collins are both credited for story, but uh, Giffen does the script and Collins does the art and cover. But their banter is great, and I really like the fact that a Rebirth title starts off with, so here's the situation. And it tells me what Blue Beetle is about, because I don't particularly know them. I know, know them a little bit about uh, from the um, cartoon. But hey, I had laughed out loud for real three times on this, and I usually don't do that when I'm reading books. So I am going to say, I mean, the breaks between the, the twin villains and he gets beat up by body parts. This is really good. I'm going to get the second one. I am very impressed. Really impressed, actually. I don't know who these guys are. I'm going to have to do some research. But hey, thumbs up to Blue Beetle. So I just wanted to let you know that this Blue Beetle Rebirth number one, the pages in here are exactly the same as the original DC Rebirth number one, the 299, the starting of it all. So there's two or three pages of Blue Beetle in this with a cameo of a very special person, one of my favorite characters in the DC universe, exactly the same pages as this. 411, brothers. Cyborg Rebirth number one. Really well thought out, very well done. I would also like to point out Paul Pelletier. Um, wonderful penciler, did a wonderful job with Throne of Atlantis in Jeff Johns' uh, Aquaman run. Well done, good start. Hellblazer, number one, Rebirth by Oliver Moratat. I don't really know too much about either of these uh, writers or artists, but uh, starts off with a political jab, very much like Brubaker's uh, Kill or Be Killed. Um, there's uh, Wonder Woman and Shazam talking a swamp thing, a little bit odd in here, and at the very end it breaks the fourth wall. Altogether, uh, a one-issue arc, and that begins Hellblazer Rebirth on to Hellblazer number one. So in Hellblazer one, I really did enjoy the dialogue between Swamp Thing and John Constantine 
as a flashback and retcon to the rebirth issue. However, the overarching story that they're going to continue with that has uh, two brothers and starting the... that has the overarching story of two brothers that start world wars, that being World War One, World War II, uh, that's not grabbing me as well as the art is not grabbing me. Um, I think this is on the bubble and this one that may be pruned. Sorry for the pun of Swamp Thing. Off my pull list. Deathstroke Rebirth number one by Priest, who I know from Valiant, Quantum and Woody's, and that's mainly a humor title. Um, I'd like to think I have a good head on my shoulders. I've reread this three times. I can't piece it together unless the guy's name is Kenilworth Wintergreen. But before I move on to actual number one, I really want to point out this, which I believe was before the 17th issue in Deathstroke's last run. This is by Phil Hester, who writes uh, Mythic. This is a self-contained single arc annual, annual number two. It is fabulous in so many different ways. The art, the twists, who is the Balkan. Um, even if you don't read Deathstroke or if you like Deathstroke, this is a must have. I must iterate, this is probably one of my top 20 issues of all time. Deathstroke annual number two of August 2016 by Phil Hester. All right, now on to Deathstroke issue number one in hopes that it solves the questions that this rebirth has laid out. Deathstroke rebirth number one by Christopher Priest. And yes, in this one page here, we have all of the answers to last issue. However, it is so convoluted. I mean, yeah, you may get it if you read it three or four times, but it's almost needle needlessly popping. But it is almost needlessly popping around to be complicated for the sake of being complicated. I hate saying that because I am a problem solver. I like riddles. It's just a little bit too much. We still don't know what We still don't know what the secret password is, and we are getting to know about this Time King, Clock King. I don't know, it just seems very convoluted to me. It pops around a lot and seems complicated for the sake of being complicated. I don't know, I'll give him one more issue. Deathstroke number two by Christopher Priest. Uh, yeah, this type of writing with flashbacks, it's very confusing. It's engrossing, good art, uh, but yeah, more questions are revealed than are answered. Earth 2 Society Annual by Abnet, who's writing a lot of titles, almost up to five, I believe. Wonderful art, wonderful action, a lot on Huntress, but in a way, sort of superfluous, but you still have Dick Grayson and his son reuniting. So they, they needed an issue to sort of go over all of that. And they put that into this annual. R really nice art again. I gotta, gotta put that out there. And uh, great, um, great fighting scenes. Quadrant Supreme number 11. Gonna have to say this has nothing to do with Civil War II. And they go to the Baxter building and use a time machine. And yet again, they take out the big players of the Squadron Supreme. I don't know what you're doing, Robinson. But hold your breath because Namor's coming back. I promise you that. And now in this one, we're slowly seeing the Teen Titans become the Titans. We see the old Teen Titans, Wonder Girl and Robin, who's now Nightwing, Aqualab, is now called Tempest. How about that one? Uh, Speedy becomes Arsenal. Um, so yes, the Teen Titans fight Titans here because Abracadabra, being brought back in this issue, is the one that said that made Wally West go away. Um, again, the Abnet Booth Ratman Dollhouse. Some awesome, awesome artwork work in here. 
Um, I will be continuing with this title. Excellent work. So now we have Hitch's Justice League Rebirth. Hitch is also finishing up his JLA title. I believe that's going to go to number 12. S simple enough story. It's grandiose. You need all the Lantern and the Justice League to be there. However, I got to say that the art took a hit because they have to do two per month. Justice League number one. Yeah, well, you know, they're all there and it's Justice League. It's sort of a weird story starting to develop by Hitch. The one thing I'll give to you, though, the art, at least they're giving the scale mail of Arthur an actual run for its money. As I said, Hitch's JLA 11 and 12 will be done in September. Right now we have Justice League number two. And again, it's a worldwide event. They need all the members and good art for Aquaman's armor. But Hitch is getting a little bit Grant Morrison Cray. Justice League is now number four. And I just tell you what, man, it is freaking weird. I never thought that Hitch was sort of like Grant Morrison. But this, this is just getting odd. This is the old JLA before Rebirth, but also by Hitch. Not to be confused with the Justice League, that is also by Hitch, that's at number four. This is nine, and I, it looks like 10 and 11 are gonna be coming out next week, or within this month. 10 and 11 on the same week, though, is what I've been saying. I think it goes up to issue 12, back by popular demand. But Hitch's Justice League is just freaking weird. This one still has got it going on with the, the god Rao uh, from Krypton. All right. And that is the Batman v Superman variant cover. Yeah, like I said, this is getting crazy. Hitch on Justice League number three. I'm not going to consider this a spoiler. It's going to be whether you get it and you've gotten it or you're not going to want it. Okay, watch this. That is like a Green Lantern light type of thing. That is called the Kindred. And those are like the size of people. So these are very, very large beings. And they've been around forever. And what in the heck? They're made of humans. Yeah, so all the humans like got together and got melded together to make these huge Kindred things. Okay, Hitch, you've officially gone off the reservation. I don't, I'm going to keep with it. I'll let you know. But... I would not get this title with all the great Rebirth titles. No need to get this one if you're on the fence, all right? Birthright number 18, Mikey is back. Joshua Williamson writing at his best. Get it, love it, get the trade. Birthright 18, older brother helps little brother and grandfather gets taken out by Enoch. Mikey is saying that Enoch has something to do to save Terranos by freeing Terranos. We got a big army coming in, but we're gonna have to wait an issue because issue 19, we're going back to Terranos, so issue 20 will be the big battle royale because he is the chosen one. This is the sixth hardcover volume of Pathfinder by Paizo and Dynamite, even though it says five, it's the sixth one. Um, I was hoping to put this in my Jim Zub portion of this video, but it's actually not. It's, it's made by several different writers um, that actually helped with Origins. Um, several different writers that helped out. Actually, several different writers that helped out with Origins, which was volume four. Great story, succinct, wonderful play off of adventurers in two different groups. I love the Pathfinder hardcovers right next to all my D&D &D hardcovers. Always a fan. In fact, I'm probably gonna go back and read a lot of them and read them over again. Jim Zub's Thunderbolts number four now with the Squadron Supreme because I don't know Robinson can't get it right poor Squadron Supreme he just can't seem to know where to put them but now just so you know Zub is in charge of Kobik the young girl the Cosmic Cube and the one that's all about Pleasant Hill well she's in here maybe a little known fact but the Thunderbolts are now in charge of taking care of Kobik and now we have the Squadron Supreme involved and then the Inhumans before then. 
So there's a lot going on in this title. I'm reading it because of Jim Zub, but I gotta say, it's nothing like his Glitter Bomb. All right then. Jim Zub writing Glitter Bomb, number one from Image. Uh, he self-admittedly says that this is not something normally he would write, as opposed to Wayward or any of his D&D stuff, Pathfinder stuff, even Thunderbolts for Marvel right now. This is all about Hollywood, acting, auditions, and all the crap that comes from it. Boy, do I know it well. He's hit it, he's hit the nail pretty hard right now, I'd say. Strike. He has done very well at capturing what it is during an audition. Pretty impressive. I think I'll trade weight. Bought this again. East of West, number 29. This is a very, very special issue. Something happens in it that we've been waiting for for 29 issues. Civil War II tie-in number two, you listen. So freaking done with this title, oh my God. Love it, love it. Unnecessary reprieve from Dent's reading. Scotty Young, thumbs up. Did you know that JMS, Joe Michael Straczynski, is no longer writing comics? That's right. This is his last title, people. This is issue 11 of Dream Police, and I believe it says to be continued, so there's gonna be a, at least another issue. Um, Joe's comics is going to be very different. I really do believe it's because he's in with the in crowd, with the Wachowskis, and writing Sense8. So, you know, from Babylon 5, he's gonna be doing a lot of TV stuff now. That's what I think what's happening, and his eyes are fixed. But I, I'm a big JMS fan, just wanna let you know, Dream Police, it's gonna be his last comic book. Well, we'll see, right? Issue 37, how does he do it? Brian K. Vaughn, such a wonderful writer. Fiona Staples, such a wonderful artist. I'm glad to see it back. Oh, by the way, that's a splash. Oh, just the best. Now that we're done with the Death of Magic arc in Doctor Strange number 11, which is sort of cool. Uh, well, Jason Aaron gives um, a little backstory as to the fact that he was a doctor, crushed his hands, and he's looking everywhere to try to hold the scalpel again. Almost a rebirth, if you will, of Doctor Strange in number 11. Eclipse number one from Top Cow. Zach Kaplan, who is that? Totally worth the $3.99. Great premise, great art, great suspense, great thriller. I'm in, trade waiting.